Hi there, my name's Sam from Website Right. I hope you're well. And on this video, I wanted to talk to you about changing your domain name for your website. Now, this video is not WordPress specific because it doesn't matter if you use WordPress, Drupal, OpenCart, Magento, whatever you may have a circumstance whereby you need to change your domain name. Maybe your company's having a rebrand and you've got a new website address. You know, either way, your website over time will have built up hundreds, maybe thousands of really good backlinks and Google will have noticed that, whether it's in blog posts or directories. And of course, by changing your domain, you don't want to lose all that goodness that you've built up through Google. So you need to transfer it to your new domain. Now also, you need to make sure that when people click through to specific pages on your old website, they land on the appropriate page on your new website. So say for instance, there was a link in an email or on a blog post externally that link through to your say news page. If they click that, you obviously want to transfer them to the new website, but you need to take them to the appropriate page. You know, don't just leave them on the home page because otherwise they'll need to, to navigate through your website and find that exact news page. So I'm going to show you a way to do it using HT Access, which is a little file that goes in the root directory of your files that will basically transfer them to the exact page. And also I'm going to chuck in another tip as well so that if anyone actually does come from your previous site, you can put a little notification bar at the bottom of the page that lets them know that your website has reached branded because the last thing you want them to do is click and think they're going to see a site and then they see something completely different. You need to let them know that you've rebranded because it will certainly help improve your bounce rate. So this is how to do it. So I'm going to use my own website as an example. Now, as you know, I'm called Website Right, and my website address is websiteright.co.uk. But when I started out, I was actually going to call it Websites Right. Uh, I wasn't sure really which one I was going to go for. And I started developing my site on Websites Right. And then I thought, actually, no, let's call it Website Right. But either which way, that name change could have happened two, three years down the line. And I'd have had links built up to my old website address. So any changes to the new domain would need to ideally transfer the SEO goodness and gravitas. So if I actually go to websitesright.co.uk at the moment, now, as it is for the purposes of demonstrating this video, there's no redirect in place whatsoever. Uh, but what I want to do is obviously redirect it and all its traffic that it could be getting to websiteright.co.uk. So the website's been theoretically transferred to the new domain. There it is, website right. Uh, looks wonderful, if I don't say so myself. Um, but of course, the original site is now blank, whereby uh, there are no files left. It's all been cloned and moved over. So all of it needs to be redirected. And what we're going to do is go into our file manager here. Now, if you've got FTP access to your website files, great. You may have cPanel, you may have Stack CP, or you may have Plesk. Most of it functions the same. Just go to the file manager, and then you need to navigate inside your public HTML folder. Although on Plesk, it's called HTTP docs. Um, and here's the folder here. It's just got a blank file in it at the moment. All the files are gone and have moved to the hosting account for the new domain. But what I want to do is add a new file now and I'm going to do so and I'm going to call it dot ht access so that's what we're going to call it it's important that you put the dot there it's dot ht access and click OK now if you create a file on some control panels once you've actually come out of it you think where's that file gone um, any dot files are uh, classed as hidden so you may need to tick the option to show hidden files okay but here we go this is my blank file that I've just created and what I need to do is paste in a little bit of code here and the code that I need to paste in is as follows here we go there are just two lines to it I'll explain the second line first for you so what we're saying is redirect anyone that visits this website to websiteright.co.uk as you can see here but there's also this little variable at the end here now this tallies with this part here now all I'm going to say is that no matter what URL they type in it will land on the equivalent on the new site so say that there was a link to websitesright.co.uk slash news it will then take them to websiteright.co.uk slash news 
That's also handy for when Google sees it as well, because it'll see that all the content has moved to the new domain and it's called a 301 redirect. So all of your links that Google can see, it will see, oh, it's just changed its domain. Great stuff. Now, also, it's worth noting that if you do change domain, make sure you let analytics know as well as Google Search Console as well, because that's ultra important and then you won't lose any of your backlink power. So there we go. That is how to do it. Now, if you're using cPanel and you've got an add on domain, which you can do, obviously, you've got your one main account for cPanel, which hosts your main website, but then you may add another website at a later date. And what it tends to do is create a folder inside your public HTML and then your website files will get put in that folder now say that I had the website the secondary website my other site.co.uk and there was a folder inside my main installation you've got to be careful you need to put in this rule otherwise any traffic that goes to that site will also be redirected to this so what we're doing here is just saying but ignore this website and let it be you certainly don't want any other websites that you may be hosting as add-on domains to be redirecting to your new website as well so those are the rules we've got there and then there's a little bonus file here a little well a bit of code very simple question mark ref equals websites right i'll show you what that's all about in a minute so what we're going to do we're going to click save and now i'm going to go on my existing website now and uh, let's just navigate to the latest blog post for instance here and what we're going to do now is we're going to pop this address but put in the old url so websites right and now let's see what happens now it would usually go to a blank page or a 404 page error however let's refresh i've clicked through and as you can see it's now taken it to the new URL and they've landed in exactly the same place. So it means that they won't get taken back to the home page of the new site and have to navigate through and try to find the page that they were going on. It takes them to the exact destination. But notice here, it's also added that little bit of code that I put in the HT access file. The question mark ref equals website websites right. There we go. Now, as I said earlier on, this is really handy for if you do change your name to something completely different, you can pop a little message on the new site, which actually details to the user, hey, we've changed our name. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So what you need to do is navigate to your FTP or your cPanel, or I mean, you can even do it within WordPress, to be honest. So should we go that route? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so I'm gonna log in to my WordPress. Of course, you do that by going to WP Admin. And then in the appearance, we're gonna to go to Theme Editor. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to find the file called footer.php. There it is there. Now, like I said, you can navigate to your file manager should you want to do this and then go through public HTML, WP content, themes, etc. Um, however, you can also do it through your theme editor, but just make sure you don't make any alterations that are going to cause problems with your website. So we're going to go to themefooter.php. And this is the footer of my very own website. And I'm looking for the closing body tag here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a bit of code just before the closing body tag. And the code that I'm going to insert is going to be as follows. OK, so this is a bit of PHP now that says if the reference is websites right then show whatever content you've got in there so as you can see on the actual websites right if i was to go and find that blog post again you'll see that as it just appends this uh, the ref equals websites right thing there you'll see that if you actually uh, scroll down 
you will find that reference. So it says if the reference equals websites right, which it is, then insert some code here. And what we're going to do is we're going to paste in a little bit of predetermined code that I've written, but you'll be able to see this on the notes file that I've attached in the description. And it looks like this. OK, so we've got a notification bar in there and it says websites right has rebranded to website right. And I've also got a link to a blog post which tells users about the rebrand as well. Um, also, we're going to add in this little bit of jQuery, which will enable users to click the notification close X, which will then hide that from their screens but also we need to pop in a bit of css as well this has been pre-written for you um, i'm just going to grab it from uh, my computer so you can see exactly what it looks like and uh, what we're going to do is open a new tab here on the customize menu of the website and then we're going to add our css so uh, you'll see it appears here scroll down on the left hand side additional css and then we're going to scroll right to the bottom and then we're just going to paste in the code here there we go and then you can choose your fonts all kind of stuff like that i'm just gonna uh click publish so that css is there and then we're going to go back to the theme and all the code we've got is in there as well so we're going to click update file so that has now saved. So what I'm going to do just uh, for an example, I'm going to find another blog post that I've written here. Uh, I'm going to copy the link for it. But what I'm going to do is actually just paste in the URL and change it to websites. Right. So say if anyone's going to that page and let's now click. So it's been taken to the new URL. And as you can see, it's added this banner at the bottom which can be closed off really easily, but it then gives the user a clear indication that the URL has changed. So all of it, you know, they don't get lost. If they saw another website name with another brand, even a new color scheme, which you, you know, you're likely to do if you're rebranding, you don't want to confuse them. So it's ideal to have that message there, which they can then just simply close off anyway. And of course, no one else is going to see this apart from the people that have come from your previous URL, because of course, you've got this rule to say websites right in the code. And of course, here it's saying if the reference equals websites right. So that is a really good way to help the domain transfer from A to B, but not lose any SEO gravitas. So there you go. I hope that advice helped. If you found it helpful, do click the thumbs up and all the links that you may need are in the description below. Also, please subscribe. Really appreciate you supporting this channel. All the best.